Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Review for today. Friday, the 14th of June, 2024. I'm carrying the magic code to me. Open Heavens is authored by that in the Lord Pastor E.A. Adeboye, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Open Heavens is a guide to a close fellowship with God. Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you for sending your word to us again. We pray that you will renew our minds through your words in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we are looking at holy grounds. Holy grounds. A memory verse is taken from the book of Joshua 5 verse 15. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place wherein thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. A Bible reading is taken from the book of Exodus 3 verse 1 to 5. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh thither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. The message. Any ground that hosts the manifest presence of God is holy ground, and such grounds carry great power. Merely by stepping on such grounds, people receive great miracles. Beyond that, you can carry the power on it on the holy ground just by having contact with it. Exodus 4, 1-2 tells us, And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thy hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And it came to become a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thy hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. God told Moses to throw his rod on the ground that he was standing on. And the rod became a snake. As Moses bent to pick up the snake, his hands touched the holy ground, and from that day, they became anointed. Every ground is ordinary ground until God touches it. When God touches a ground and your hand touches the ground, that hand can never remain the same. In 2 Kings 2, 9-2-15, when the horses and the chariots of fire came to pick up Elijah, they swept the ground and took him away. Elijah dropped his mantle, and when Elisha bent down to pick it, his hand touched the same ground that the host of heaven had touched, and became anointed when you and became anointed. When you started the ministry of Elisha, you'll discover that the only he only used the Elijah's mantle once to cross the Jordan. He didn't use the mantle when he healed the waters. In 2 Kings 2, verse 20 to 22, neither did he use it when a axe head fell into a river. In 2 Kings 6, 1 to 7, the power was in the hand that touched the ground where the holy chariots of God swept. In Acts 26, verse 13, when the light of God shone on the road of Damascus, the Bible says that it was a bright, it was brighter than the moon day sun. That was the light of the bright and morning star. When he came all the way down to earth, Saul of Tarsus didn't just touch the ground, he fell on it. This is why handkerchiefs that had touched his hands and aprons that had, had won worked miracles. Don't joke with any ground that is holy. If you are on a ground that you know God descends on regularly, Take advantage of it and get all you can from the ground before you leave the place. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The topic for today once more is the holy grounds. And our daddy in the Lord is drawing our attention to the holy ground. We are told today that, you know, the place where the power of God is being manifested, that is hosting the manifestation of the power of God, is a holy ground. So we should not see every ground as just ordinary grounds. There are some grounds that are holy. A ground where you know that there is manifestation of God there. That the Lord descends upon regularly. It could be a ground, a, a praying ground. It could be, you know, an altar. It could be where you know that indeed the host of the Lord, they are always descending there every now and then. You shouldn't joke with that, those grounds. And we, should, we are told that we should take advantage of those grounds. What happens when we find ourselves in those grounds? One of the things is that great miracles happen on those such grounds. When you find yourself in such grounds, a lot of great miracles happen. And also very importantly, you can be carrier of God's power, just as it was. We saw a lot of examples. If we come in contact with that with such grounds, because the anointing in that ground will come upon us, will come upon whatever touched such grounds. And that, that, that anointing will cause you to become not an ordinary person, but to become powerful. We saw it in the life of Moses. You know, when Moses, when God told him that he should, that rod, the ordinary rod, because the ordinary rod touched the ground, he became anointed and carried power. When Moses lifted up and turned to snake, when Moses was going to take that snake, his hand touched the ground and his hand was not the same again. We saw that Moses carried power. We also saw also in the life of Elijah, you know, the chariots, the horses and the chariots of fire, when they were taking Elijah, they swept the ground when they were taking him away because the power of the Lord touched the ground. And Elijah, and you know, Elisha dropped his mantle. That mantle carried power. And when Elisha was going to touch that mantle, he also touched the ground, and his hand became anointed for signs and for wonders. Not you know, he only performed miracle with just the mantle, like we're told today. But he did so many wonders. Not not even with the mantle, because he himself was became a carrier of God's power. We also saw it in the life of Paul. He actually rolled on that ground that the light of the bright and the morning star shone and his apron and mantle was doing miracles. So if you want to be for signs and for wonders, when you get to a holy ground, take advantage of it. I pray that when we see a holy ground, the Lord will draw our attention to it and make us realize that, yes, this is a holy ground. If you remember, Jacob said, wow, that the Lord is here and I did not know it. That wherever God is, he would, the Holy Spirit will open our inner eyes to see. And as we see, he will give us the grace to take advantage of that opportunity. So that we will be anointed for signs and for wonders. And our lives will not remain the same for it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The key point says, whenever you are standing on a holy ground, ensure you make the best opportunity out of it. An opportunity you can make out of it is that you can decide to pour out your heart unto God, to speak to Him concerning the every situations of your life. You can decide to rub yourself all around so that you will carry power you know, you can decide to, 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 you know, roll, speak, concern. You can bring a, something that is a point of contact so that that thing will carry power and the anointing can follow you even to the rest of your life. I pray, as even as I've said earlier, that the Lord will open our eyes to see the, that, that holy ground whenever we see a holy ground. And it will help us to take full advantage of the holy ground with signs and wonders taking place in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of the review. God bless you. Amen.